everyone, welcome in. My name is Marlene and I'm with A Room to Bloom. Thank you for joining me today. So I um, I have someone out in the other room and so I um, just decided to come into a different place to kind of bring forth a message here this morning. By the time you watch it, it'll probably be evening or afternoon. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's really interesting. When I woke up this morning, um, you know, it took me a little bit, but there was this moment where I realized, yes, I feel good. Um, so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because for the last three days, I've had uh, a lot going on, right? Um, a lot of emotion. I've had anger coming up, frustration, um, a lot of tears. So it was about working through some things, right? And the reason that this has been happening is I have been trying to help someone who has needed help and it has um, essentially left me overwhelmed, right? Um, but I also know that when I back off of that um, and I regain myself or because what happens is we feel like the fragmented self and it's like pulling yourself together so anytime you're feeling frustrated angry out of sorts taking a nap is like a reset or just you know just getting alone um, even when you are alone and awake you can still have the thoughts going around in your head so a nap is definitely a reset um, and what's interesting is, so each new day, God gives us this, this opportunity to have our human experience, right? So being in gratitude for that, right? That God brought us through the night. And um, just not um, taking that for granted, right? And then also like, I know that my behavior was out of sorts like that because that is not in my soul alignment to be crabby over um, over exerted to the point of anger and frustration and where that was bubbling up from is because I could see where the help is needed but it's about having the other person um, participate and be present enough in helping them so it's um it's like that kuba gooding jr um, quote in that movie um whatever it is help me help you right and so like where he was getting really frustrated but then it turned into um i think kind of laughter but it you know it is that it's like help me help you and so I, the bottom line is that I was taking this on without being asked because I see the need for the help, right? Anyway, if you are doing that and you're taking on stuff that isn't yours, just really asking yourself, who are you taking it on for? Are you taking on more than you can really handle? Is it overwhelming you? And everything does happen in its divine timing, so trusting it. So like today, I made my mind up last night that I was not going into today jumping right into it again because it has taken so much out of me uh, emotionally because of the lack of um, cooperation, I would say, in getting that done cooperation and or I don't know help but that's kind of part of part of the thing right anyway so it's really interesting so the second day when I was feeling like that I just was like completely overwhelmed I went to bed frustrated and um, I just I took this book um, with me and it's called his princess love letters from your king by sherry rose shepherd 
And this is the message that I opened it up to. And I wanted to share this because it was, it was just like, blah, you know, this, these added tears and the reminder. But it was really interesting as I read this. Let me read this and then I'll talk about it. It says, my princess lead the lost. Okay. So like I could see that someone is lost in this stuff, right? Um, and it's not about judgment, it's just needing help. That's what I'm trying to say. So, I am dwelling in you and with you. Because my power is in your life, you have the ability to show the way to all who need to find me. But you won't discover my power or complete your calling if you try to build your life on your own accomplishments. You have been handpicked by me to refresh a world that is wandering around in a dry, thirsty land. There are many who are lost and feel very alone. Their cups are empty and so are their souls. So let me fill you with my spirit. My appointed one, I will show you how to bring them living water and to lead them to the, tr to the true love that they long for. I will make a way for you to lead them to me. And because you loved and followed me, you will be the one they'll thank on the other side of eternity for showing them that way to heaven. Love your king who refreshes and leads. And it says, and so God can always point us as examples of the incredible wealth of his favor and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us through Jesus Christ. And that's Ephesians 2, 7. Now, Interestingly, the page is 130, and 13 is about transition. It's actually about death and rebirth of a situation or even your life experience. But it can be the death of a, like the ending of a relationship and the rebirth of, the, of it or a new one, right? The ending of a job and the beginning of a new one. So there's all these different things in life that we let go and we transition. We let go and we transition, right? And um, then it, the next page, of course, is 131. So it's about transitioning. The one is about the self. There's a transitioning of the self taking place, okay? The yellow rose here is representative of the solar plexus chakra. And the solar plexus is about learning to stand in one's power, right? So it was really interesting. When I read this, I was so completely overwhelmed, right? And, you know, um, we've all heard that saying, the blind leading the blind. And yet, I know that I'm able to help this person and maybe it doesn't get done as quickly as I would like um, just because of other things that I've gone through. Um, but, but, but here's the other thing, is that I'm very much on my spiritual journey working to stay balanced in the earthly experience right so having to be grounded and and operating in both and so we can ask ourselves are we heavily grounded in our earthly experience and not tapped into the spiritual at all or are we heavily tapped into the spiritual and we're still here in our body but we're having a hard time um doing what's needed for our for our earthly experience right so that can be like um, holding a job right that can be um, doing the mundane tasks of paying the bills the um, doing what we need to buy groceries right so like these things and when when you when you're tapping in this information and it's really beautiful and wonderful and light and um, even with lightness comes challenges, right? So there's a lot that goes on with it. But it's interesting because um, I know, like that I said, that I spend like a lot of time. Um, and so it is a lot of work for me to do this, to help another person with their earthly experiences when I'm trying to even work on my own <laughs> so so it's kind of like a double um, a double thing right and so um, I, the reason I'm saying this is because 
One, if you feel lost, there are others that can help you, but you, you just have to be afraid of, uh, not be afraid of asking, right, for help. Um, and you don't necessarily have to overwhelm someone, um, but it is about one step at a time. And um, the second thing is, if you are the one who is helping, um, just kind of remembering this about leading the lost. Now, again, this, what I was speaking on is like, it was more of the earthly stuff that we're trying to do. Um, and yet, the way that I move through life and my experience and everything, I am um, considering God, the divine, um, asking for help and guidance on this, you know, prayers. So it's a bit of both. But um, again, back to that, God doesn't give us any more than we can handle. Um, and yet sometimes, you know, when you are, even when you are a healer, you, um, it's like the wounded healer, right? So it isn't that we don't have uh feelings, emotions, because we're a healer, it's because we do, because we feel, because we've been through so much. Um, empathy, right? Having empathy for others and yet learning how to protect oneself and balance the self when um, there's a great realization about starting to feel out of sorts because you can be in soul alignment and there will be tests where other people will pull you but what happens is it's like, from my perspective, no one was asking me, but I keep watching a situation and watching a situation. And it's a situation that I was more involved in a few years ago and I had to step back because it was making me, um, at the time, just very ill. It just was actually just too much for me. And so I had to step way back. And then in the meantime, not a lot has happened. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to um, go back in and try to help, right? So it's just very interesting. Know that you're not alone. If you are a caretaker and or a healer and you are um, helping others, it's so important to take care of yourself the best you can first. Fill your cup. And if that literally means in the morning, you know, you get up to um, just have 15 minutes to yourself, just to regather. Um, it's not about thinking about the day, it's about enjoying that moment. It's not about thinking about another person. It's about connecting with God, connecting with your spirit team and knowing that you really aren't alone. Um, and it's about releasing what is no longer serving you, whether that is um, thoughts that are ruminating, right? Pain that you're carrying, so possibly processing pain, spending some time journaling, um, maybe taking a walk, getting out in nature, right? Um, so I wanted to share that. And then I believe it was the next day. <clears throat> so remember, I'm still overwhelmed. We're on the third day, right? So I'm overwhelmed. And this was the message that came up. And this book is Moments of Peace in the Presence of God. Um, and this is a neat book because they have a message for each morning and each night. So it's 365 times two um, messages. So it says encouraged and hopeful. The date on here happens to be February 12th. So that could mean something to you, right? February is the month of love, right? I mean, when we think about that in our human experience, right? 12, I think about the 12th dimension. 12 is an important number in spirituality. 12 months in the year, right? Uh, 12, 12 hours in um, like, the morning part of the day, 12 hours in the evening. There's so many different things with 12, but <clears throat> it says encouraged and hopeful. How does, I'm sorry, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That's Romans 5.5. 5. Interesting, 5.5 5 is about changes, right? So um, it's not about changing someone. We can only change the way that we um 
think or look at or process things, right? But it, it was about helping someone, not trying to change them, helping them where they're at, right? So it says true hope is hard won. So that's what I've been holding on to. It's like hope, um, right? True hope is hard won. It begins with the daily pressures you face. Through them, you grapple with the truth of God, who he is and what he has promised, right? So that's exactly what I was doing, just grappling with the pressures of all of this stuff. Pressures produce perseverance, the ability to keep going and to be patient because you see that God has never let you down. And that perseverance produces character because your life is not based on daily changes, but on God's eternal truth. The truth produces hope, which is, does not disappoint because you have been, I'm sorry, you have seen his goodness. Through it all, you know him and love him more. And that is truly a reason to feel encouraged and hopeful. It says, Dear God, today I praise you for pouring out your love and giving me hope. Even in the daily pressures, you are doing wonderful things. Amen. So, <clears throat> It's really interesting because that, it's so funny. I don't even know that I could have come up with that word grappling, right? You know, oftentimes it's, it's like reaching for straws, right? And um, so let, let's talk about what can that look like in our human experience. Making a phone call, having to be on hold for whatever, an hour before you speak to someone. Or after you've been on hold for an hour, the phone hangs up. Or, you know what I mean? So, so these are all tests, but it can be very overwhelming when like in the example, I'm working on taking care of my earthly stuff, but then taking time, which is an earthly thing to help someone in their experience, right? But in the spiritual realm, time, doesn't really exist and and so we're existing and it's it's just fascinating we're working with time but it doesn't um, exist because everything's happening in the now moment if, you, if you're questioning that I know it can be very interesting but it's kind of like when you shift into spirituality you move into timelessness right and anyway so it's just fascinating but I thought this was just once again so, so true. When you you grapple with the truth, it begins with the daily, daily pressures, right? So when we think about pressure, okay, what happens? Like pressure is when we feel squeezed, right? And we feel squeezed or pushed into an area or something that makes us feel uncomfortable being squeezed and having pressure isn't fun some people excel like under pressure right but when the pressure is goes on and on and on that then many things can happen right it can pressure one actually into a spiritual awakening um, but basically we're here for soul growth okay so these all of the stuff that we go through is challenges and tests. But here's the thing. Um, I want to read this again. The truth produces hope, which does not disappoint because you have seen his goodness. So when we are taking the action steps, we are, and we have to wait on the phone for an hour, we learn patience, right? Um, when we speak kindly, kindness is given to us, right? Um, but what's really interesting, so like in the example, I'm trying to work through and help, help someone who isn't really like saying that much about the stuff because they don't really know about it. They don't really understand about it. But you kind of are like, can, can you participate? Can you be awake? Can you, you know, um, be around well I'm trying to do this so if I have questions for you that I need answered right and so again that's um, teaching us patience right 
teaching us grace for another and grace for the self even because now you can feel the frustration rising when you need them to be there and they're uh, however you want to say it you can say kind of checked out of the whole situation just doing them and it's like every time you, you have the question it's like hey can you it's a big ordeal to to get them to come back and to participate right so anyway it can be a lot and I just wanted to say you're not alone if you are going through this I I just wanted to read this because it is important to stay encouraged and hopeful if you are helping others and or if you're trying to help yourself and change your situation whatever that might look like um, we can only take one step at a time so don't get overwhelmed by the mountain of changes that you may feel need to be made or you want to make um, if you can um, write them down but not get overwhelmed and just say what can I do right now what makes the most sense to do right now in this moment and not look at the rest of them and just focus on that step just focus on that step it really can be helpful so <clears throat> pardon me I'm gonna grab something else here so that being said, um, I thought those were messages because if I'm going through that, this is like in the cosmic energy, right? It's not just me that's going through it. And if you are here listening to this message, that means that like energy attract like energy. And so there is some type of a message here for you. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to read um, some cards from, it's called the Soul Truth Deck by Brianna Hovey. And see what messages come through here for the collective with this. And just ask that Spirit show us a message that would be helpful for the collective. Would you like to show us? Do I believe I am worthy? That's so interesting. So, <clears throat> um, okay, so like this person that I'm helping. I don't know if they do. Uh, I think so. I think so. Um, but didn't know how to like navigate this stuff, right? And then, but that person reflects back to me. I reflect back to you, right? So we're all reflections of each other. So this is what it says. You are worthy, you are deserving, and you are loved. Start seeing the divine beauty within you. And go out and claim the life you have dreamt up. Your crown has been bought and paid for. Put it on your head and wear it. And that's a quote by Maya Angelou. It says, today's soul action is for a big goal or dream you have, ask yourself, do I feel worthy of this? Today's mantra is I am worthy of it all. And so our thoughts are very, very powerful. And then taking that action step are words we speak that's why manifestation um, positive affirmations are really helpful for you along your journey and then taking an action step towards what it is that you'd like to manifest in your life puts out this vibration and it shows the universe that yes like you're serious about this right and you're thinking about it so again if you decide that you're outgrowing your home right and you're ready for more space or you're ready for a different area or whatever that is right the, the very first thing is one day you might be doing something and you're like all of a sudden it might be I am so tired of trying to put so much stuff in this area right and all of a sudden just stands on you I think it's time to get a little bit bigger place you know and that could be that you start out and then you end up having kids and there's toys and kids stuff and you're, and you're like okay a little space would be really great you know awesome so the thought comes in your head and then maybe you speak with your spouse about it and you're like yeah why don't we at least start checking into it so you start looking online so you had the thoughts now you're taking the action right how does the universe respond uh, miraculously on the internet houses start popping up right in the area you might like to live all of a sudden you're like well maybe we should talk with uh, a mortgage broker 
Okay, so you talk with a mortgage broker. How do you respond? Here's the list of items that we will need from you, right? So this is like tennis and it goes back and forth. Um, so what are your goals and what are your dreams? So don't make any of them, um, they're all accomplishable, okay? So it is about don't diminish them or make them smaller than they are. It's about being honest with yourself with what they are. Um, so like you can have goals that are for yourself. You can have goals as a family, helping your children set goals. Um, but then saying, okay, what does this look like? Let's take a step towards it. But not but not having every step laid out that if that plan doesn't fall into the exact place, then there's complete disarray. It is about trusting the unfoldment of it, right? Um, so if we just instantly went from here to there, what would we have learned, right? It's the journey of getting there that we have many, many lessons along the way, right? So it's about not giving up on our dreams, acknowledging what they are, and saying, I'm just gonna take one step towards that dream today. Maybe I'll take a couple, but at least one, right? But not, not get so, I have to have this answer by this day. It's like, because there is a reason that you may not get an answer on something immediately, because even though you may not see it, you have a team that is working on your behalf. So what you're thinking, what you're doing, what you're creating, you know, they're, they're trying to help things unfold that is not only for the highest and best for yourself, but for all, right? And that's what we're hoping for. So that's not just about the small self, the selfish self, the ego, right? It's about considering the betterment of all of the, of, um, all that is, um, considering like uh, other people, um, other beings, the earth, right? So it's, it's really quite amazing. But again, remembering today's mantra is I am worthy of it all, right? So it's about getting your head wrapped around that. And instead of always thinking, um, like settling, that's I think the word that I'm looking for, right? And that can be a very interesting challenge because <clears throat> the more that we move into the spiritual experience, the less we focus on the material, right? Um, and yet we still have stuff here that helps our journey, you know, be, um, more effective, right? So this is a, um, it can be like a battle with the self, right? Where, what do I have? Like, yes, I'd like to live in a new neighborhood, but do I have to fill the home up with just stuff and junk and unnecessary stuff, right? Um, can I be more mindful about what I put in my home? Can I be more conscientious of the earth, right? So so these are the types of things. All right, so now with that being said, I'm gonna go to the Power Angels deck. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Archangel Power Tarot cards, and let's see what messages come through here. Pardon me. Okay, so these cards are by Radley Valentine and Dorian Virtue. Put these up here. <clears throat> All right. So what would you like to show us here for the collective that would be helpful, hopeful, and healing? Okay, five of Gabriel. So this is um, the five of wands. And so there's been, um, this is like where you're trying to defend yourself. <laughs> it's so funny because 
you know, when I think about that, it's like, I was in a defensive mode. That was part of why I was angry because I wanted help and I'm like, I wanted cooperation and I wanted this, right? I wanted, I wanted. So I was being defensive. But this says there is a challenge that you can resolve. Withdraw from the drama of others. Have patience with yourself and with those around you. See, and I was sort of running, not sort of, I was running out of patience. I was running out of patience on, at like, all ends, you know, with hanging on to the phone with um, many things, right? And truthfully, if you, you know, when you look at me, you can probably see that I'm just kind of tired from pushing through this. So I recognize that it's like, no, I'm not doing any of that today. I'm honoring this. I feel good. It's, you know, it's funny. I've only been up for about an hour, but all of a sudden I feel myself getting um, where, yep, I'm ready to rest again. <laughs> but I got up earlier than normal. So here's the image, the five of Gabriel. Um, she's, she is an angel that is watching over another woman who looks like she's putting a puzzle together. So there is a challenge that you can resolve. So what is the puzzle, right? Trying to get all those pieces to fit, right? So withdraw from the drama of others. So asking yourself, do people kind of bait you in or do you involve yourself where you don't need to, right? Now, I, I involved myself. Um, but this is a family member I'm trying to help. It's not um, like a friend, you know, that I've overstepped my bounds with or a coworker. It's someone, you know, I understand can use some help. But again, have patience with yourself and those around you. So if my body is telling me, like right now, no, you're tired. It's important to honor that and to continue to take the rest because it is through the rest that we are being recharged, right? By God's energy, we're being recharged, we are being refreshed. And through that rest, more clarity comes to to the situation. If you ever done that, um, like say years ago when we'd use a checkbook more, like you're trying to balance a checkbook and it wouldn't, it would be off and you just like try to get it right. <laughs> and it was like, you're like, I don't know where it is. And you know, where this discrepancy would be. And so finally you just walk away from it. And after you walked away and you just cleared your mind and did whatever you came back and it was like, oh, it's right here. You could just totally see it. But before you were stirred up. Right. And so what we're trying to do is to let that dust settle. <laughs> right. So it's, it's just like, oh, I can see clearly now. Right. Because I realized that there was just too much going on. All right. What else do we have here? I'm going to keep this up here. OK. The next one is the king of Michael. Michael is the king of swords here. Principal, rational, ambitious and respected. Wisdom and objectivity are important right now. Stay in your integrity, a situation that calls for honest and open communication. Okay, so here's um, Michael. He's got his arms crossed over his chest. There are two white doves flying there. Again, a pathway lined with yellow flowers, right? So again, yellow is about that standing in your power. Uh, not letting someone else take your power away. And yet, interesting, not taking away someone else's power. And so that's another thing, like with that situation, it's like, like I could roll up the sleeves and go, I'll do this for you, right? <laughs> and I have done that, right? But it's, I've learned from that. It's also like, no, I want you to help me. Um, I, I want you to at least be here to learn from the conversations, to learn, you know, but there's like been a challenge with that. But it is interesting that I said that with these yellow flowers again, not taking away someone else's power, okay? That is, that leaves them with an underactive solar plexus and when you are trying to take someone power, someone's power away, that leaves you with an overactive 
solar plexus um, chakra. So asking yourself, have you been trying to take away someone else's power or has someone been trying to take yours away? And so it's about standing up for yourself if someone's taking yours away, but doing it, you know, just like, no, I'm going to kind of take care of this or handle this from here. Thank you. Um, and if you're trying to take someone else's power away, releasing the grip, right? And so that when I learned about this as a mother, um, cause there is that line, you know, when you're trying to manage, um, keep your kids safe, right? You know, where is the, where is the, um, the guideline for that, right? Um, and when I let go of the grip of some of that stuff, it's like, oh, I felt so much better, right? Because I was trying to help or run the show, right? And it's like, oh, just let go a little bit. And then it's like, oh, this feels a lot better. <laughs> anyway, um, but you're being encouraged to stay principled, to stay rational. So I would say in the last couple days that I, you know, my tears and my frustration was coming up. So that didn't feel rational to me, right? Um, stay rational, stay ambitious and respected, right? So that's encouragement for that. And the other thing is this card is blue, which, which speaks of a communication. Um, so be principled in your communication, be rational ambitious but respected and respectful i'm going to add um so like when you get on a phone call that's really long you could be short and curt with people and they have nothing to do with anything you could be because your frustration has nothing to do with them and then you self-recognize you're like yeah, yeah i need to whoa pull back right it can't it could be like that and you learn from that um definitely um, but this is definitely about communication. We just had the new moon in um, Gemini, which is all about communication. And so this is about riding that wave of how are you going to communicate effectively um, what it is that your wants and desires are, and then effective communication with others. Very clear communication, right? Um, so just keeping that in mind. Oops. So there's a, cha a challenge of some sort. Okay, what else do you have to show us? Okay, the page of Gabriel. So the pages are messengers, and this is the messenger of wands. So this would be like a message is going to be coming in. So watch your emails, watch your texts, watch your mail, right? It says, follow your passion. And then the wands are also about, um, they represent fire, um, passion, energy. Um, it can be sexual energy. Um, let's see, just creativity, right? Inspiration, that type of thing. So follow your passion. You are ready for a challenge, for any challenge. Opportunities for excitement and an adventure. So the page of Gabriel is someone who is energetic, brave, optimistic, and playful, right? Playful. So this color is orange, which reminds you. So that is your um, sacral chakra, which is re represented by orange, right? So your joy, your joy center. Follow your passion. So spending some time thinking about that, what are your passions? Interestingly, because the five of Gabriel is also orange, right? This this one here where the gal's trying to put together the puzzle, there's a situation you can resolve. It could be involving your passions. So is is, you know, someone, you know, because it's about um sorry. It's about, you know, just just getting getting to the answers of the situation of what's going on here. Okay. Anyway, what else do you have for us? P 
piece. Okay, 13, it, again, which I spoke about in the other book, is transition. In the tarot card, it's the death card. It doesn't mean the death of someone um, necessarily, but it does speak about your third your third eye and trusting your intuition right also he is surrounded in nature he has the dove again which is about peacefulness so letting go getting out in nature just let go what isn't serving you right even yesterday I watched a video and like this gal said it's just time to let go of the old narrative of the old story and when we say old, as you're moving up in the spiritual journey, the way things used to be, it could be old relationships, it could be the old job, it could be the old protocol, the old um, programming, societal programming, right? So now things are starting to shift and it takes um, time to start to understand that. Okay, the next one we have is the Nine of Gabriel. So this is the Wounded Warrior card. This is the Nine of Wands. And it's interesting, though, here we have a farmer sitting here with a, standing here with a shovel. And, and it says, stay determined um, and move forward. So you've been through a lot of stuff, right? In the regular tarot, this person standing there on his wand bandaged with a bandaged head. Here, this farmer is standing with his shovel. So stay determined and move forward. Be prepared for any possibility. Um, environmental activism. This just reminds me, and again, it's orange, right? So you may have, what brings you joy in the environment that you might want to help out, right? But yesterday, I'm trying to remember, it was yesterday or if I was listening to a video last night, and it, it said, um, let's see. It was talking, oh yeah, about being an empath. And, you know, that that is like a superpower, right? Because you feel so deeply what other people feel. They don't have to say it. You just feel it. You know it. You can tell, right? And um, that the reason, you know, you have been through, you've been through so many things in your whole life when people thought you were too sensitive, it's actually that that helps heal others. And so this being prepared for anything and any possibility, so many empaths go out, um, they have to kind of, um, honor their energy right honor their energy because they pick up a lot of stuff and then they feel it so and then they have to decide what is theirs and what is someone else's and learning how to do that and then also transmuting it breaking it down moving through the tears feeling it because you feel other stuff right and then so it's transmuting it and breaking down other people's stuff and your own right <laughs> so um, as an empath, again, be prepared for any possibility. That's why you can feel like a wounded warrior because you've been picking up everyone's stuff um, and knowing how to honor where you're at, right? And um, honor where you're at with that. If your body's tired and need to rest, and that's even what this person was talking about in this video, video I think it was actually like a podcast or something about just you have to rest when you're tired you have to really manage your energy because of this all right what else do we have here king of gabriel so again we have the king of wands Someone who is generous, inspirational, dramatic, and driven. 
Okay, now keep your eyes on the big picture. Leave the details to others. Experience that leads to success. Genuine concern for others. Okay, so this is so interesting. Like as the king, like as the role of the king, you're an overseer, right? You oversee others. So it's not about getting lost in all those little details. Leave those to others. So this is more like being a delegator of um, work, right? So this needs, you know, okay, this is what needs to be handled. Can you please handle this situation? I trust you to handle this, this particular situation, right? Handing those details to the others, but knowing what the bigger picture is. Think about how many times there are, um, oh, scenes where whether they're looking at war or whatever, right? But they're coming together saying, okay, this is how it's going to be. Then they have an army and this these people are assigned these duties, right? So looking at that. So experience, you, you didn't get to this uh, role of king for no reason, right? You've had so many experiences and you the experience that you have had ends up leading you to success. And um, the King of Gabriel is one who definitely has genuine concern for others, okay? Um, so here is the image. Again, it's wands and it is a, the orange color. So, um, hmm. We have the flames, right? And so that's about your passion. Someone who's generous, inspirational, dramatic, and driven. <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. What else do we have here? Actually, I want to go back for a second and I want to see something. So I generally do five cards. And so this King of Gabriel would have fallen under the five of Gabriel. There's a challenge you can resolve. Um, so... in order to resolve that you're being encouraged to keep your eye on the big picture okay <clears throat> the next one is the lovers okay archangel raphael make choices from your heart deeply emotional commitments the power of love oh well um so I want to look at another one. Okay. So this falls under the King of Michael. So the King of Swords. So the lovers could be, you could be meeting someone who carries that energy of the King of Swords. Someone who is principled, rational, ambitious, and respected. Um, deeply emotional commitments. Um, now this person, there's a possibility that they might not be... Um, even though it's a deep commitment, um, they might not be incredibly emotional, um, like a king of cups might. That's, you know, cups represents the water, tears, emotion, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take another one. See what else we have. What else would you like to show us? The Three of Gabriel. So this is like waiting for your ship to come in. Again, it is orange. It says, prosperity is arising from wise planning. Take time. I'm sorry. It is time to take the next step. Optimistic plans that turn out as expected. So this gal is traveling. She may be going overseas and she might be getting even on a ship, right? Um she has a smile on her face you know what's really interesting and i almost said that in the last one see the um the wings with the trumpet they're up in up here in, sorry up here in the corner okay and i was gonna speak on that so it's like peace with the trumpet but it's the same flag that's here on, I don't know it's, if it's, yeah, it's on the ship, right? So like being called 
hearing the trumpets, right? Okay. So maybe you're going overseas to see your love, okay? All right, what else do we have here? What else would you like to show us? Okay, the Ten of Ariel. So this is about great wealth. Um, and it says there is very much, so very much to be grateful for. Financial success and the promise of retirement. A rich and rewarding family life. So here is someone who is uh, a couple gals that are sitting at a cafe in Paris, right? The Eiffel Tower is in the background, right? So... Um, there could be great wealth in this relationship. So just keeping that in mind. Um, but again, it is about gratitude, right? Just being grateful. Being grateful for all that you have in all of your circumstances, right? <clears throat> Whatever that is. And also learning not to hoard um, everything or finances because you want to keep energy moving, right? So what you... What you give out, you you know, comes back to you, right? So it's about not having blockages. <clears throat> All right, what else would you like to show us? Okay, Ace of Gabriel. So we have um, the Ace of Wands, which is about creativity, right? So this speaks of a gift of passion, of opportunity, and inspiration. The chance to do something amazing and a sense of wonder. So there's so much here that has to do with Gabriel, which again is the sacral chakra, which is about our joy center. So, so many of these coming up. And I think I have, whoops, I have one more card I'm going to take here and then that will be it. All right, what else do you have for us? Queen of Raphael. Okay, so the Raphael is the healing angel, right? So the Queen of Raphael is someone who is kind, understanding, giving, and psychic. Follow your heart, the love of home and family, and trustworthy psychic information. So you might be receiving psychic downloads um, and trusting that. Um, again, here she's sitting on the sea. She's actually holding a trident, and there are two dolphins jumping in the background with a crescent moon in the background. Okay, just gonna see what's underneath here. This is the two of Ariel, which is a, the two of Pentacles, which is about juggling things. It's important to have balance in your life, so working multiple jobs or projects at once and making work fun. So just looking at how much are you juggling. Um, it's okay to do, you know, a, a, whatever, a couple few things at once, but don't get overwhelmed. Remember when to take the rest, um, take care of yourself, um, leave the lost, right? I think how that said, leave the lost and the broken, or no, leave the lost, right? Um, and just, you know, work, just work on being the best you that you can be. And, you know, that's that's always that challenge. Like, how was I yesterday? Can I do better than I did yesterday? Or can I even do better, like, in the afternoon than I did this morning? Can I be a better version of myself, right? Um, and remembering that we are, we are spirits that are having a human experience that we were given the gift of emotions, which make our experience very much like a roller coaster ride. But when we start to understand our emotions, understand our thoughts, and become more of an observer of our own life, then that um, the highs aren't maybe as high, the lows might not be as low, we can kind of regulate that a little bit more. <laughs> anyway, I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care.